LED masks make all these insane claims, but are they legitimate or just a waste of your money? A lot of men who have their foundations down ask if there's anything else that they could be doing to look their best and really separate themselves from the pack. So we start looking for more reasonable ways to move the needle and we find the possibility of different personal care devices out there. So today the aim is to break down LED masks, what's the data and science behind them, which are the best ones, and then we'll wrap up with a how-to guide and an overview of the popular Omnilux mask. I'm Angel with The Modern Man. I'm a chemist who specifically specializes in men's personal care. Let's get into it. So here's the thing. LED tech for skin benefits and anti-aging, it's not a new thing. They had rad experiments back in the 60s and this tech has since matured into a common office procedure and now even an at-home treatment. There's not a question of if in-office red light therapy improves our skin. We've got plenty of great studies showing the effectiveness. In the results, objectively measured data showed significant reductions in wrinkle up to 36% and skin elasticity up to 19% compared with the baseline. So there was a marked amount of collagen and elastic fiber increases as well. And this goes along great with other studies where things like biopsies have been taken. So the bottom line is studies are out there and they're great as far as LED tech. Really quickly though, here's a breakdown of the types of LED lights. As we go up on this scale, the potential for penetration increases. Blue light, specifically 415 nm, is good for things like acne, inflammation, decreasing oil gland size. But this is more so for the inflammatory type of acne, not those little black heads or white heads. So the ones that we're familiar with mostly on these masks is 633 for red light and 830 for near infrared. And these are good for inflammation and anti-aging. And this all leaves us with two to three questions. One, do the at-home devices work as well as the in-office devices? And if so, which one should we be looking at? Two, do they work for men? Women were the majority of participants in these studies and are generally the majority in these types of studies. This matters because men have different skin than women. On average, our skin is 25% thicker, produces more collagen, double the sebum, and we have thick facial hair if we're fortunate. This means that there's more obstacles for active ingredients to work through, and in this case, infrared light and red light. Generally speaking, in cosmetic studies, this is why active ingredients have better results with women. So for question one, in terms of the existing literature out there, there are a lot of great findings that say these at-home treatments do work and are quite comparable. However, none of these are really ironclad, well-run, randomized, placebo-controlled, double-blinded, or any of that. So from a pure scientific perspective, the data is just not conclusive. But sometimes it does take a while for data to come out. If you take a look at different types of, of training or compound use by elite athletes, you'll definitely see this. So as much as my fellow chemistry and scientific peers may hate to hear this, I think the mix of great foundational studies on LED therapy in general, plus overall okay studies on at-home treatment, plus several anecdotes with obvious before and after pictures, they all lead me to feel very confident in recommending at-home LED therapy is a worthwhile investment for anyone who's looking to up their anti-aging game or really max the appearance of their skin. And if you are not doing the absolute must as far as taking care of your skin, definitely check out this video right here where I cover the biggest needle movers and how to put together a simple, effective routine. Or was it right there? Anyways, this leads us to wonder, okay, so which LED mask should I get? As a disclosure, I did reach out to the brand Omnilux and I received a free men's LED mask from them about a year ago. There's no promise to produce any sort of content or speak of them in any particular way. I just wanted to try an LED device for myself. Brand wise, there's so many out there, Omnilux, Current Body, The Light Salon, and so many more. There's a few issues when looking at these masks, which range from cheap to hella expensive, and they all have their own parameters as far as light wavelengths, milliwatts of intensity, joules, light count, distance from the skin, and time of use. I've seen really obvious results from a number of the different brands specifically mentioned earlier, so don't feel like there's only one answer here. That's my simple answer. My recommendation though, is to look at the ones who provide detailed numbers that we can then compare with the metrics of the in-office devices that were used in clinical studies, the good studies. If you can't find the wavelength, it's probably a BS product, let's be real. I've seen plenty of 40 to $80 devices that do this, a lot of the really cheapy devices do this. If you don't wanna do the comparison thing, you can just try one of the ones I mentioned earlier or look for one with a guarantee, but keep in mind, collagen and elastin, they take time to, to work when you're getting the increases. And that's why a lot of these studies saw benefits from three months out and really improving as time went on. So here's a good reference, and this might sound a little intimidating, but bear with me. It's way easier than what you think. 
One of the in-office devices is the Omnilux Revive. It's a $25,000 machine. It uses 633 wavelength red light, 830 of infrared. The intensity of the red light is 105 milliwatts per cm squared. The infrared is about 55, and this is the amount of light arriving from the photon onto the surface area. The fluence is measured in joules per centimeter squared. This is basically the amount of energy delivery per unit area. This is 126 for the red, 66 for the infrared. This device is 20 minutes of session time, used at about five to 10 centimeters from the skin, and it has 1800 bulbs as well as 416 near infrared bulbs. To make it easy for you, here are some of the best choices I found. They're all FDA cleared and they're comparable for a weaker type of at-home device. You've got the current body, the Omnilux, and the Light Salon Boost. They all sport pretty similar stats that line up with that device. 633 for the red, 830 for the infrared, 30 milliwatts of irradiance, 18 joules of energy, session time of 10 minutes. The current body and the boost have 98 lights and the Omnilux Contour has 132. But again, I've heard plenty of success stories and other things with the Ecoface or Dr. Dennis Gross. So regardless of what you choose, it's important that you find one that you will use consistently. If you do want to use the one that I use and like, I do have a code for you for 10% off. I haven't seen a deeper discount than that after a quick Google search. So if you find a better one, definitely use that. But this is pretty good as far as they go. Otherwise, happy to help you out and I appreciate the support. What do you think though? Share it in the comments below. Have you used one of these devices? Have you seen any great results from them? Have you known anyone who's done that as well? The whole premise of these at-home devices is that we're using weaker lights that are closer to the skin and they're used more frequently than the in-office treatment which is typically two times per week for four weeks with the session time being 20 minutes, whereas these at-home devices are generally three to five times per week for 10 minute sessions. We'll get into a quick guide on using these masks and you'll specifically hear about the Omnilux mask, but first, we still gotta answer, do these work for guys? And we've got more maybes here. While I personally saw good improvements when using the Omnilux, I had a lot of other things going on, so it's hard to conclusively say that it was purely the LED lights that were doing it. I mostly saw improved skin smoothness and texture, especially in this cheek area right here. There just aren't a lot of men in these LED studies and they're not broken out into a group of their own. And so it makes it all very difficult to know what we can expect. Armilux does have some literature on this and just FYI, they are definitely the leader in research here. They've conducted more clinical trials in this area than any other company and they've got published peer reviewed papers. That's why I reached out to them. So there's studies showing that different near infrared wavelength of 1072 has great benefits in various situations. As we learn, the higher the number, the more potential for deeper penetration. So Omnilux has theorized that 1072 can be particularly helpful for men because that increased penetration accounts for the differences in our skin, i.e. denser collagen and thicker skin. A study was put out earlier this year that does show promise in this area where the Omnilux men's mask was tested. The results look great. Digital skin analysis showed improvements in wrinkles, pores, UV spots, brown spots in just six weeks. And that's great because we know from previous studies that three months is where the benefits really started kicking in. You be the judge though. Here you can see some of the findings. Do you think they're significant or not? I would love different measurements disclosing how much of a percentage of improvement was seen versus saying, hey, look at this, looks pretty great, right? And this ultimately leaves a lot to be desired as far as research into LED therapy for men. I get that it's hard to justify a larger, more in-depth study, especially when there aren't any in general for LED masks, just for the in-office devices. And the current LED masks seem to work and sell pretty damn well as is. So in conclusion here, probably, but still technically a maybe. If you like what you're hearing so far, drop a like, a comment, a subscribe. That way you don't miss any content that's gonna help you look and feel your best. Really appreciate you rocking with me. Let's keep going. Now on to how to use your LED mask and an overview of the Omnilux mask that I use. I use the men's mask, which uses three wavelengths, the 633, the 830, and the 1072. This is what the box looked like and presto. Very, very Patrick Bateman. Always read the directions of your particular device, but generally speaking, you wanna apply these to clean skin because A, let's not dirty and grime up the mask and B, Face products can reflect some of the light and so we want maximum absorption. You can clean your mask with water and a paper towel or for a better clean like what I do, use 70% isopropyl alcohol to clean the surface of the mask. For the Omnilux, it's recommended to use three to five days per week for four to six weeks and then you can lessen up for continued maintenance after that. You might be thinking, mmm, 10 minutes? No way, bruh, ain't got time for that. And maybe you don't. 
but it's pretty easy actually. I just throw this bad boy whenever I'm doing a 10 minute meditation or if I'm watching a video or something and the data supports that these at home devices, they're not gonna damage your eyes through normal use so you don't have to keep your eyes closed the entire time. The mask comes in one size so if you got a giant or weird shaped dome, Good luck to you. For me, it fits pretty well. I do have one complaint though. I find that in order to have the bottom half closer to my face, I have to tighten the unit a lot. And the problem is when I do that, the top part of the nose right here at the bridge really starts to dig into the snaz and it's, it's uncomfortable. I could always wear the unit normally and there's no discomfort, but I want those LEDs nice and close to my skin, especially in this area right here since it's gotta deal with facial hair. Now, I don't know if this is because I sweat like a 300 pound basement dweller who's taking the stairs, or if this is everyone, but I kind of get a little bit incredibly sweaty during the 10 minute process of using the mask, not gonna lie. If you wear the mask tight like me, you'll probably have some marks on your face, like you're wearing goggles or VR or something like that. It takes five to 10 minutes to go away and that's pretty much how easy all this is. Try to store your mask flat so you don't damage any of the lights. Overall, I really like the mask. I haven't used tons of these devices, but the ones that match the parameters I mentioned, they all look pretty much the same if we're being real. So I imagine it's just how the straps work as far as the comfort level. Maybe they're a little bit different here and there. All in all, red light mask get a thumbs up from me. I don't think it's necessarily a must have. That's where sunscreen, retinoids, good wash, and a moisturizer will come in. But it's very low risk, lowish effort, and it has benefits that you'll probably see within a relatively short period of time. So if you're a guy who's in your 20s or older, and a one-time $300 to $400 expense isn't gonna kill you, it's a good investment. That's all folks. As always, drop your personal care questions in the comments, drop a like, a subscribe so that you don't miss content that'll help you look and feel your absolute best. I'm Angel with The Modern Man. Adios.